Yes, uh, good morning to you listening to Terap 87.6 FM Seeds of South Sudan. Welcome to Building Bridges, South Sudan China Cooperation Talk Show, where we discuss partnerships across borders. I am your host, Biar Valentino Matiop, and today we are going to discuss uh, the impact of medical exchange programs between uh, South Sudan and China. Good morning to you listening, and of course, uh, stay tuned and be with us. Welcome to this special edition of uh, Building Bridges. Of course, our guests um, today are Dr. Anthony Lupai Simon, Director General of Juba Teaching Hospital. We have also Dr. George Chen Si, a team leader of China Medical Team to South Sudan, and Dr. Gift Gibson Natana, Deputy Director of Juba Teaching Hospital. Let's, uh, let's explore how this partnership is changing healthcare in South Sudan. Good morning to you, my guest. How good, good, good morning, host. All right, thank you. You are welcome uh, to Terab. Uh, we will we'll begin by first introducing yourself uh, to my listeners. Yes, uh, I, I did so, but uh, I want you uh, to introduce yourself by yourself and uh, tell my listeners what you do at your previous uh, place of work. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for your invitation. I'm real honorable to uh, attend this interview. Uh, my name is George, Dr. George. My Chinese name is Chen Si. Yeah, Dr. Chen Si in Chinese language. Yes. All right. Welcome to Terap, sir. Thank you. And to you, doctor. Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the listeners of uh, Terap Radio. Uh, I am called uh, Dr. Gift Gibson Natana. I am the Deputy Director General of uh, Juba Teaching Hospital, and I am glad to be here this morning to speak to our listeners. Thank you. Yes, good morning, Terra Radio. It's my pleasure to be here for the first time. Uh, I'm by the names Basoma Trevor Ayub. I'm working with China Medical Team. So I came here, I escorted my team leader, Dr. C. Chen. Thank you. All right. And yes, uh, thank you for coming to Terab, gentlemen. And uh, dear listener, yes, stay tuned. I'll give you an opportunity later after listening to what this beautiful talk show is about. Well, we'll first begin, uh, Dr. Gibson. Yes, how have uh, the medical exchange program improved Juba Teaching Hospital? Thank you. Uh, um, I just want to apologize because you mentioned the name of Director General, uh, Dr. Anthony Lopai, who was supposed to be here, but uh, because of other commitments, he was not able to come. But he assigned me to come and talk on behalf of Juba Teaching Hospital. And concerning the Chinese exchange, uh, medical uh, exchange program to South Sudan, and particularly in Juba Teaching Hospital, uh, we know that uh, this program he started uh, 11 years ago uh, by the two governments of South Sudan and uh, China signing a cooperation agreement and one of the areas is the medical uh, field that uh, the Chinese government has committed to uh, send medical teams composing of different uh, medical specialties to South Sudan every year. So from the time that uh, the program is started until this day, the team leader here is sitting with us is the, uh, the 11th batch of the Chinese medical team. So uh, it has been a long program, uh, and we know that you know there are many levels uh, for this cooper uh, medical cooperation between the China and South Sudan. There are many levels of cooperation. One of them is the medical team. The other one is uh, you, you know that you know the uh, e expansion and modernization project of uh, Juba Teaching Hospital that you can see the first phase was finished by the building of this. Uh, when you go to Juba Teaching Hospital, you will find that the accident emergency uh, building is a new uh, building that was uh, you know built by the Chinese in through the China Aid program. And so uh, these programs, no doubt, have uh, changed many things in Juba Teaching Hospital. You can see that you know they are the, the team, apart from the medical services they give when they are present here for one year, 
there are also donations of medicines from every year they donate medicines there are also donations of equipments and materials medical materials and there are also uh, training programs within South Sudan and also uh, the our doctors and nurses and staff are also sent to China for short term uh, you know trainings so there are many levels of this uh, cooperation and indeed in a way it has helped us in Juba Teaching Hospital to to change the face of services that the hospital is uh, providing and to elaborate more how what changes actually uh, what changes in uh, patient care have come uh, from working with Chinese experts? Uh, you know, because uh, the, the, the medical services, that the, the services that the hospital delivers to the patient, uh, it needs, first of all, many, uh, many uh, things to be able to, for the, for the hospital to provide the services. First of all, the, the working environment must be uh, the right or conducive for delivery of services. So you can see that now, where before Juba Teaching Hospital was uh, just these uh, old uh, buildings, but now you can see that the, the accident emergency, uh, the space is uh, more, and also the, 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 the work environment is improved, is modern now mm -hmm. than before. And you find that the equipments, uh, some of the equipments are already there. Uh, we don't have CT scan before. You know, CT scan is one of the main uh, diagnostic equipment that uh, a, mod, a tertiary hospital, like Juba Teaching Hospital, must have. This one is now helping because in cases uh, that we we are able easily to, to you know to diagnose the conditions of patients in case of accidents, in case of uh, tumors, and this. And also uh, the other aspect is you know the staff themselves, the human resource. You can find that now the human resource must be uh, trained and uh, their capacity must be built. So through the local trainings and also the trainings that our staff get in China, the capacity of the human resource or the staff is improved to be able to offer the services in a higher standard. So these are some of the areas that uh, the Chinese medical team has helped Juba Teaching Hospital in to improve the services. Mm, can you actually share with us some success stories from collaborating or collaboration with between uh, South Sudan and China in healthcare? Uh, I can tell you there are many success stories, you know, because uh, like now, you can see that the Juba Teaching Hospital is the main referral hospital in South Sudan. And it's the major hospital actually in South Sudan. We receive patients from all the states in addition to the three administrative areas of South Sudan. They are all referred to, referred to Juba Teaching Hospital for medical care. Uh, and so uh, when you see the, the, the size of, uh, you know, the, the patients that come to Juba Teaching Hospital and the expectation that uh, people have about the hospital. Uh, and uh, the hospital is supposed to be, uh, because it is the face of the nation in medical services. So uh, when you see uh, before the, uh, the building of the, two, uh, the, the first phase, the two build, uh, buildings, you know, when you compare Juba Teaching Hospital to other regional hospitals, you cannot compare. But now, you know, Ju I can tell you, Juba Teaching his Hospital is even far better than some of the hospitals in the region in terms of building, these two buildings, okay? Now, uh, what I can tell you is that uh, this is a success story because uh, uh, China has uh, contributed in lifting the face of Juba Teaching Hospital from where it was to now looking to be a modern hospital. And as we are speaking today, the phase two project is, uh, is starting. It has already kicked off. And after three years, the Juba Teaching Hospital will completely be a modern hospital. So uh, these are some of the things that you, successes we can talk about. 
And concerning the, the equipment, just as I mentioned to you, some of the equipment that were not there are al already there. Okay? okay. And these equipment, not only CT scan, but also we have in the lab now, we have a modern lab that can diagnose. Because, uh, you know, without uh, modern diagnosis or uh, lab, you cannot be able to di give the right, uh, you know, diagnosis and then also the, the right treatment, the doctors. The doctors depend on the lab for writing their, their treatments. So now we have a modern uh, lab, you know, we have the routine uh, tests and then also we have uh, the now microbiology lab that was uh, contributed by the uh, Chinese uh, medical team. We have, uh, you know, they are in, in the Opsengaini department. There is a, you know, a, a, an area where we test for, for, therefore, we do pap smears. That is, uh, you know, testing for cervical cancers. This was not there before, but uh, it is uh, something new that uh, the Chinese uh, uh, medical team has provided for the hospital. These are some of the small, small things that uh, many people will not know about, mm. but they are very uh, important. Thank you so much. And uh, to you, Dr. George, uh, yes. from your perspective, uh, how, how does, uh, I mean, how do you see the impact of uh, China medical teams present in healthcare system right here in South Sudan? Uh, excuse me? Uh, uh, from your own perspective, yes. how do you see the impact of China medical teams' presence yeah. on the healthcare system in South Sudan? Okay. Mm. China medical team yes, has uh, helped uh, uh, local health system for uh, 12 years till now. Yeah. Mm. China medical team uh, was mainly mm, consists of different department including internal physician, pediatrics, gynecology, and obstetrics, uh, sur surgery department, and uh, other de mm, radiology department, and uh, just uh, Dr. Gift uh, mentioned uh, laboratory. So, China Milk team uh, fo focus on the field, uh, the fields of uh, such uh, area. Uh, mainly uh, include infectious disease yeah. uh, diagnosis, uh, treatment, and prevention. We also focus on the digestive tract disease. Yes, we have uh, helped Jubatin Hospital to build a endoscopy room, and we have carried out more than ten, more than one thousand and two hundred cases for local people. Mm. The other uh, mm, main area we focus on is the pediatrics and uh, gynecology. We have built a cervical screening center, yes, uh, cooperated with Juba Teaching Hospital. And uh, we have monitored uh, a lot of mm, tumor, including benign and the carcinoma, for the local women. Yes. And the last uh, field 
we focus on is about uh, the pediatrics. Pediatrics, you, you know the. As we all know, uh, the the death rate of the new baby in South Sudan is relatively high. So we uh, have launched a training program, a series of uh, courses for uh, local medical staff, not only JTH, but also the other hospitals. Uh, it aims to improve the skills of uh, the Practice ability, practice ability. Uh, we uh, focus on training the staff, including midwife, the nurses in neonatology wards, and uh, we hope that uh, through this training program. We we combine the short time and the long time program uh, training program, and uh, want to uh, improve uh, in uh, decrease the death rate of new babies. So uh, we have uh, cooperated, been cooperating with. Uh, the local staff, not uh, not only the staff of JTH, but also the other uh, staff in South Sudan, uh, in including the community hospital and uh, some clin clinics. Uh, for for instance, we have uh, cooperated with the university the clinic of Juba University we have helped them to build the laboratory laboratory department and we donated some basic equipment facilities and other uh, necessary ma materials and we will we have been there to see the patients regularly. Yes, uh, that's all. Thank you. All right. Uh, le 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 let me ask you one more question. Yes. Uh, yeah. Are there any specific disease control programs or initiatives that you are currently implementing? And what are some of the key challenges you are facing? Challenges? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I catch you. Uh, yes, uh, over the past uh, several months, we also have faced uh, mm, face some challenges. Uh, yeah, before you come to challenges, mm. I was asking if there are some specific disease control initiatives or program you are implementing right now mm. Mm, and the challenges after. Uh, we mm, now that we have to face the patients from uh, around uh, all the nations. They come to from uh, every uh, district of uh, South Sudan, mm, but the, the majority mm, of the patients face to mm, poverty and they have no they have uh, no enough m money to pay for their journeys uh, and uh, the local medical resources is uh, also limited so uh, we only can provide some basic medications and uh, uh, sometimes we we can 
do the operation for the poverty. Mm. Also, uh, the vice director Gift also know that uh, GTH also has uh, some issues uh, that need to be solved uh, because of the limited uh, health resources. So we can cooperate with each other to face the challenges and uh, try our best to solve the problem currently we faced. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, to you, Dr. Gift, uh, what are the future plans for Jupa Teaching Hospital um, in the health sector actually in South Sudan? And how are these plans aligned with the government's uh, priorities? Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, you know, Juba Teaching Hospital, as I told you before, is a main referral hospital in the nation and the first hospital for the government of uh, the Republic of South Sudan. And as a hospital, we have uh, future plans, of course. Like now, you can see, I told you before, that uh, the hospital is now starting. Uh, the, through the Chinese, uh, the, you know, support, the phase two project is starting now, has started actually. Uh, the preparatory phase is uh, going on. Uh, the groundbreaking will be maybe after a month, and that will be done by the, uh, the leadership the, of the country. Uh, concerning the future plans, of course, it will fall within the... the the, the, the changes that are happening in the infrastructure of the hospital. We, uh, we are seeing that, you know, we are telling our people now that uh, Juba Teaching Hospital, that uh, many sometimes uh, have looked into and are not satisfied with the services, uh, is that is, uh, after some few years, the face of the hospital will be different. And that will not come only when, you know, we also uh, get the necessary support to, to support the plans that we have for the hospital. Because as the main re referral hospital, uh, it is supposed to be, you know, providing a services at a standard level. And that uh, standard cannot be attained without the necessary resources that like uh, Dr. Shane has uh, just mentioned. He is, he is here for nine months, but he came and realized that there are gaps in the services that the hospital is supposed to, to provide because of the resources that we currently do not have. So I take this opportunity also to, to, to urge all those who are in the position, uh, whether the government or all who are there, who are concerned about uh, the delivery of health, uh, health services in the hospital, to support the hospital through you know, the necessary port, uh, resources so that the hospital is able to provide the services as they expect. Because without resources, we cannot be able to provide the services as we expect. The clinic, just yesterday we were talking, there was a workshop going on for the waste management in the hospital. We are talking about the cleaning. Uh, many, when they come to Juba Teaching Hospital, they see that you know there are issues with cleaning. But how can uh, the clinic can be uh, if the resources are not there? So now, as we, as the administration of the hospital, yes, we are foreseeing for after a few years when the buildings are finished, the face of the hospital will be a modern hospital. And that will require also, you know, more resources in power, in, uh, in, in cleaning, even the cleaning will require more resources. And also, you know, the human resource need to be motivated and the equipment must be maintained. Because the, 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 sub, the donation comes with the equipment. Some are missing, but the others which are there need to be maintained. Supply must be kept constant. All of these plans, that is why as you ask for the plans, we are, as administration of the hospitals, we have plans. 
but without the resources uh, that cannot be attained and as such from our side as the administration we are we are you know uh, taking this opportunity through the terab rodeo to in order for our government our parliament our president and all the those who are in position that indeed Juba Teaching Hospital needs your attention because it is the face of the nation. And uh, some may underrate the role of uh, health, but health is a very important uh, aspect for every nation. If you don't have a, a properly equipped and well-functioning hospital, we, can, we have seen before during Corona, uh, there, are ch there are challenges, borders were closed, and so we have only what we have locally. So we have to make uh, the face of Juba Teaching Hospital uh, as we require, and we have to put it as a standard because it's a public hospital. It's the one to determine the standards even for the private hospitals. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you for that. And uh, what are some of uh, the key lessons learned from Chinese uh, cooperation with South Sudan in the health sector? And how can these lessons be applied to other areas of development cooperation? Uh, you know, I uh, take this opportunity to thank the Chinese uh, medical team in the person of uh, Dr. C here. You're welcome. And also uh, the Chinese uh, uh, embassy, the Chinese uh, th em the, the people because of the, you know, the kind of uh, relationship, the cooperation that uh, we have had with them uh, during the last few years, it is a uh, people to people. It has uh, exceeded the level of, you know, diplomatic relationship, government relationship. It is now people to people relationship. Uh, like this medical team, they have nothing to do with politics. They are coming to interact with us at local level with the people of South Sudan. There is a need they have come to, 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 to fill. So, uh, Indeed, as we said, this uh, kind of uh, collaboration is multi-layered. There are many levels that uh, the cooperation is, uh, you know, uh, is uh, expressed in. So uh, through this, we encourage that uh, they should also, because uh, there are still some gaps that need to be filled, uh, and we urge them also as our friends that wherever they have seen some gaps, they, 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 they have to cover. Like now, we have seen that the same Thai Chinese uh, medical team, they, they are not only based in Juba. Some, from time to time, they also go to states to provide services in the states. Uh, every year, they stay in Juba Teaching Hospital. After a few months, they go to one state. They go, uh, in a year, they may go once or two, uh, twice or three times. And so, uh, from this uh, forum, I just want to, to encourage the, 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 the Ch our friends, Chinese, and also other, other friends from all parts of the world to, 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 to come in and also follow suit. Because uh, as a South Sudanese people, we are open to collaborate and to cooperate with anyone. And, you know, uh, that is why uh, our nation, as you see, is a still growing nation. We know that we are coming from a situation of a conflict, but we are now embarking on, you know, transforming from a conflict situation to a development-focused uh, country. So now we, there are a lot of things that need for this country to, to develop. And there are also many opportunities for all the nations of the world to come here in South Sudan and invest, not only in health sector. The, in health sector, there is a, a very huge opportunity for investment and also in other sectors. On Terab, 87.6 FM, seats of South Sudan. Welcome to, uh, welcome to this uh, beautiful talk show. It's Building Bridges, South Sudan-China Cooperation Talk Show with me, B.R. Valentino Matiop. And with us in the house is uh, Dr. Anthony, sorry, uh, Dr. Gift Gibson uh, Natana, who is the Deputy Director of Juba, Juba Teaching Hospital. We also have uh, Dr. George, uh, Dr. George Chen yes. Si, who is the team leader of China Medical Team to South Sudan. And we also have uh, Boso Basoma Trevor Ayub. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure having you in the house. And let me take this opportunity 
uh, to welcome Basuma in the house. Welcome and uh, share with us your experience as you have been uh, escorting at the Big Bang. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you so much to the listeners of Torah Radio. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here as I talked before. Uh, I'm working with the China Medical Team. Actually, I started working with China Medical Team in 2012 up to date. So, as we have heard from team leader that the China Medical Team, it has now dispatched 12 medical teams to South Sudan. Actually, all those 10 medical teams they have been working in Juba Teaching Hospital. Uh, before they started working in Juba Teaching Hospital, uh, so many things are they missing actually, as we have heard from Dr. Gift, that the China medical team, it has improved the standard of Juba Teaching Hospital, not only the buildings, but with the equipment and services. Uh, if we talk of uh, equipment uh, like CT scan, endoscopy, uh, cancer screening center, and so many things have been implemented by China medical team through this cooperation of uh, China and South Sudan. Uh, on addition to that, uh, China also donates medicine and medical equipment every year to Juba Teaching Hospital. So that one is also a milestone. Every year it donates medicine and medical equipment to Juba Teaching Hospital. So I have nothing to say much. Uh, I only appreciate Dr. Gift and uh, my team leader. Dr. Chen Si for coming to Tareb Radio and thank you for hosting us. Thank you so much. Thank you mm -hmm. uh, for coming. Uh, le let me uh, go back to Dr. Gift. Uh, there are some most, uh, what, are, uh, what actually are some of the most pressing issues, the most priorities that you want Chinese medical team to tackle first? Uh, uh, no, excuse me, maybe because uh, we, uh, as a hospital, as a government hospital, uh, we are the first, you know, supposed to, to be in position to support everything that is happening, that, that, that is required. But uh, our friends, like the Chinese uh, people, they have uh, done a lot for us, but still, I believe, uh, because of the the, the, the kind of uh, collaboration and relationship that we have with them, they're still able to provide according to uh, their resources that are available. And we can see that now uh, the hospital uh, is moving. Uh, there are many areas now, uh, especially, you know, uh, the, the issue, because uh, the hospital, you know, the operation of the hospital requires the buildings, requires the, the environment, and they are now doing that, improving the, the, the structures, infrastructure of the hospital. And also, uh, like the equipment they are providing. But although here some are missing, the missing equipment that are like the MRI. MRI is the main uh, equipment that is now missing, uh, but in phase two, that is coming. That is also in already in the plan. Uh, and also we have a mammograph, uh, mammograph, that is the other main equipment that is missing. In phase two, uh, is also coming, okay? So uh, they may, there will be only few equipment at that time. But what, uh, as you have said, what is important for the Chinese to help us in, because uh, some of these equipments, like uh, the, in the lab, when they are donated, you know, they are, is they, these are closed system, and we discuss this with them. Closed system, that means uh, the reagents and the supplies must come from China, not from any other part of the world. Uh, and we have had, uh, you know, challenges concerning that because 
you know, sometimes, you know, the resources are not enough to outsource this from China. Okay? So you find that from time to time, sometimes maybe the equipment will not be used and will not be functioning because of a challenge to importing the reagents from China. So the concerning this, we have these discussions with them before. Uh, and that is why we are saying that, you know, the equipment must be open system so that it will help us to get uh, reagents from anywhere. Uh, and also, you know, concerning the, 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 the medications, yes, of course, they provide the medications. And it's, uh, one time it was almost like one point something a million U.S. dollars before two years. So uh, this one is a huge uh, amount of money that is, uh, they, uh, they, they are providing freely. But uh, as we know, the hospital uh, operation needs a lot of inputs uh, daily because uh, the hospital works 24 hours and the, si the number of people who come to the hospital is huge. So this really calls for you know, more support from the Chinese, but also more support from our own as a nation so that uh, we make sure that everyone who comes to the hospital gets the services that they need because juba hospital is a large hospital and everyone comes there especially the vulnerable the the, the poor those who have no money who you know who need really need you know services freely and now this uh, challenge we are facing like in the outpatient some uh, some patients come when the, they have nothing without anyone and they need the services but because uh, the supplies are not there so uh, that is why sometimes you face challenges okay yeah. so these are some of the areas we need the support of our friends like the chinese but also we ourselves must, uh, must uh, support ourselves yeah and uh, finally can you talk about a research center uh, is there any support for research center or is is, is it already in place and it's, 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 it's important having research by the doctors in the hospital. Uh, this is a very, very important question you ask, you know, because uh, uh, the hospital, how the hospital works, you know, it's not just like, you know, bringing medication from anywhere and, and then using it. Yeah. Maybe this medication is uh, because they, in China they have done the research, this medication w is, works well for the people of China. Mm -hmm or the people of Kenya, the, the, the drug is produced there, uh, it works well. Therefore, for us here as a, a nation, not only Juba Teaching Hospital, but research, research is encouraged, is supposed to be uh, carried everywhere in all our institutions, whether in the agriculture, whether in uh, industry, whether in the hospitals. And the hospital is a very fertile ground for, you know, for, for research. But because of this issue of resources also, we find that the research that is produced from the hospital or the, our health institu institutions is very minimal in a year. You may not find any research that has been carried because resources are not there. But, uh, you know, I just want to, to say that, you know, research is very important because, uh, you know, the practice uh, in a uh, medical uh, practice needs evidence based you know you know so, uh, you, it must be evidence based uh, and that will you know through researches Rece you do research you find the trends you find the patterns and analyze and find that now this problem is happening because of this maybe this drug in this uh, concentration is not enough for our people the best drug for this condition is supposed to be this and even the conditions that are happening in the hospital, in which season this condition is more. And uh, now, currently, what are the diseases that we are facing more? So this can be identified only through research. But now, uh, this is not happening. And I believe it's not only the hospitals, because for last year we were attending a, 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 you know, a seminar on this issue of uh, research, so, uh, you know, support, uh, supporting in South Sudan generally, in the university and all the institutions, uh, there are issues with the research. So we encourage whoever who is there to, to take uh, issue of research and indeed support us. And especially I just personally, I just want to, to, to also 
uh, uh, pass this message to our partners, uh, partners, not only Chinese, but international partners, because we see that, you know, in the region, some of our organizations, international organizations are supporting researchers. Uh, but here, these organizations are here, but they don't support researchers. So I just want to encourage uh, the, uh, especially our partners to support uh, doctors, to support whoever comes with a research proposal. Okay. And uh, to you, uh, Dr. George Chensi, yes. uh, are there some plans from the China medical teams to help in a research, uh, uh, in a research uh, department in South Sudan? Yeah, I, I, I don't agree more. Thank you. Yeah, um, the point just uh, Dr. Gift mentioned, I also agree with him. Uh, the research maybe is the most important point that uh, one country can mm, progress, can develop continuously, and can produce the terror and uh, property uh, in future. Uh, so, um, the research center mm, is really necessary for uh, South Sudan in different areas, just uh, Dr. Gift mentioned, not only mm, medicine, but also agriculture, mm, industry, and on uh, other areas. Mm, we play to um, help uh, Djibouti Hospital uh, to construct some research center. Yeah. Especially, I think uh, maybe the laboratory department is more proper. Uh, as Dr. Gift said, we have helped uh, uh, laboratory department to build a microbiology, medical microbiology center. Yeah. This is a, a new and uh, advanced uh, lab for the whole country. Yeah. Mm, as we know, in, in the comprehensive hospital uh, in South Sudan. There is no any one medical microbiology laboratory yeah, in the whole country. So this is the first uh, microbiology lab in South Sudan. And uh, mm, through this lab, this professional lab, uh, the clinical doctors can diagnose, treat, uh, diagnose the disease, and uh, treat the patient accurately. Yeah. Mm, it can test different uh, paskings of the different uh, micro microbiologists, including bacteria, virus, and uh, parasite. Yes. Uh, so I also uh, suppose that maybe we can continue to help this lab yeah, to construct. Uh, a new research center and uh, choose uh, scientific and uh, advanced uh, uh, research point and uh, focus on the infectious disease, uh, including malaria, typhoid, and uh, cholera. 
and other infectious disease, uh, the common infectious disease in this, and uh, to help to prevent uh, and uh, treat such kind of uh, patients. Mm, and uh, this maybe can mm, help to relieve the, the pain of such uh, patients and uh, increase the incident rate, uh, decrease the incident rate uh, of such kind of patients. Yes, thank you. Uh, just you know, I just want to excuse for uh, to uh, to add another point on this uh, mm. issue of research. Yeah, welcome. You know, uh, just uh, before two months, uh, I I had an opportunity through the collaboration, also Chinese uh, team collaboration, to visit China for a seminar. Mm. And during that seminar, one of the things that I discovered uh, uh, concerning research is that uh, you know they are seriously engaged in R and D research and development. Everywhere, any institution you go, research and, and development unit is the mo is the heart of the institution. Uh, not uh, finance, mm -hmm. not any other area, but R and D is the heart of every institution in China that I have noted. The second point is that you know the Chinese government two percent of the national budget and annual national budget is dedicated for research. Uh, 2% is not a small money, it's a huge amount of money. Now I can tell you the whole budget of the uh, Minister of Health is only less than 2%. That is uh, granted, uh, every, uh, given every year. And you know, it is not even uh, equal to the research. How much of that two, less than 2% will be used for research and how much will be used for service delivery. So through this forum, we, I encourage all our government and through our uh, you know parliamentarians also to see consider when they are passing budgets to consider budget for research because without research there is no development development does not come out of blue the development comes by taking you know into consideration our the local factors what are the local uh, factors that play in the you know in our country in our society so through this uh, uh, research, these factors can be identified and the right solutions can be uh, put for this. But when we are talking about development, development without research, that is, uh, you know, we are talking uh, vague in vague uh, terms. Building Bridges, South Sudan China Cooperation Talk Show, where we focused on the impact of medical exchange program between South Sudan and China. I'm your host, Biar Valentino. And to you, dear listener, it's time for you to call us and give us a, a, a very short question or a comment or a brief suggestion. Write on 0911-876-876. Or you can also call us on 0981-876-876. You are listening to Terap, 87.6 FM, Seeds of South Sudan. And... Um, yeah, as we are waiting for our callers, uh, we actually almost come to uh, the end of our show. And um, what I would like uh, to get from you, my guest, is um, uh, actually uh, from Dr. Gift. A uh, gift, actually. What are some of uh, the major challenges the the hospital is facing? Major challenges. Uh, thank you for this important question. Uh, hospital uh, is facing challenges in many areas, but uh, the major ones, uh, you know, been currently the major ones, you know, in making sure that, you know, the power supply is steady. We have a major challenge in the supply, steady supply of power to the hospital. Uh, the pub because we have uh, some sources of power, three sources of power in the, in the hospital, but uh, we we as it, we know it is not yet steady. It somehow somehow there is a improvement, but uh, this is uh, one of the major areas of, uh, of a challenge in the hospital. The other one is you know like water. Water is not all, all also stable. 
and you know that you know for the hospital we need is tables a steady supply of water 24 7 but that sometimes is not there that is why when there is a shortage of water you find that you know the hospital is not clean there is a smell because they we need to clean the the hospital every uh, top of the hour okay so there is uh, also this uh, issue of uh, water these two power and water you know they are supposed to be the hospital is supposed to be hotline for power and also for the water they must be steady but now this is not there because hospital is considered like any other institution or houses or residences uh, okay mm -hmm. when the power water is not in the residences it's not also in the hospital when power is not in the, ho in the residences it's not also in the hospital so we are treated the same but the hospital must have uh, its a special status uh, so this we are urging also our the authorities who are responsible to to take that into consideration the other aspect of this is that you know we are charged the same uh, for power the jetco power is uh, expensive we are charged the same like any other uh, institution mm -hmm. but it's supposed to be free or uh, there's some there must be a special consideration for the hospital it's the same for water the other area is you know the supply of uh, medications because uh, without uh, medications we we cannot be able to to, pro to render the services as, uh, as uh, we are expected to do because from you know long time there was no uh, supply of uh, medications from the from the ministry or from uh, you know due to the challenges of budget there's no steady supply that is why you find that you know sometimes uh, patients come the doctors are there but uh, they have to go out and get the medications number three the the, the 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 you know the staff must be motivated to come to the hospital because uh, you know and unmotivated staff will reflect in the poor performance uh, first of all they will not be able to come to the hospital because of lack of tra transport and you know the salaries are not there for a long time so how will we expect uh, a poor cleaner or a nurse to come from uh, bags of Gudele there daily expect them to come daily to the hospital mm -hmm. so uh, there's a, pr a pro problem in motivation of the staff and that reflects in the performance of the, 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 the employees as general and even the performance of the hospital. So we urge those who are responsible to, to support the, the staff in the hospital so that when you support them, you will see the effect also in the good services that will provide. We have also challenges, you know, in the human resource. Uh, uh, the human resource, some of them, you know, because of these uh, issues of, uh, you know, support, they tend to leave the hospital and go and work in private hospitals and organizations so who are paying well. Okay, so we need to actually, you know, this one uh, is thrown to the government to see that uh, for, you to, for you to retain the staff, the qualified, and the, the bad thing is that, you know, this is staff, all of the, this is staff who are working in the private hospitals, they are actually the staff of Juba Teaching Hospital. Mm -hmm. But because of the poor working conditions, they left the hospital and went to work outside. Uh, so these are some of the main challenges that the hospital is facing. Thank you so much. And dear listener, 0911 And... Uh, yeah, we have actually come uh, almost to the end of our show. And uh, you, my guest, I want you uh, actually to elaborate on your last points. Your last points, starting with you, Doctor. Uh, thank you. I am uh, so happy to be here to talk to the listeners of Terab and also discuss some of the important uh, issues concerning the hospital and especially also to point out uh, how our cooperation and uh, relationship with the Chinese team have uh, so far helped us. So uh, at the end, I just want to say that all of these points that we have uh, discussed, especially the hospital, uh, I want to encourage uh, all those listeners out there that uh, the hospital uh, is uh, having challenges right now, but the staff are dedicated. Those few who are on the ground, they're dedicated. 
uh, they don't get paid, but still you find that the services are moving. So we urge whoever is in that uh, position of uh, authority there to help the hospital provide its services. Our, fr our friends from China are helping us a lot, but also we need to, 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 to depend more on ourselves than those who are coming. Because uh, they, su they, support, they support once, they cannot take all over everything con concerning you know, the work of the hospital. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dr. George? Yes. Yeah, your last remark as we are signing out. Okay, thanks, uh, host. Mm. First, uh, I'm really glad to be here to uh, talk with the host and to communicate with the issues about the relationship between China medical team and Tribal Teaching Hospital and uh, we also are also pleased to be with Dr. Gift and uh, my medical assistant uh, Mr. Trevor uh, to be here to, to attend this talk show. Mm. I also mm, approved the opinion of Dr. Gift that he re enforced. Mm, I also think, the, mm, I also advise the government, the authority mm, need to improve the conditions, the circumstances, uh, not only uh, the environment of the Tibetan hospital, but also to help to improve mm, the salaries of medical staff. I think it's really vital for the country because the medical staff is uh, responsible for the health. Yeah, the health of the uh, whole country. If uh, their health and uh, their home and on the their family members uh, can't be guaranteed daily, so how can they suffice uh, so for the patients, for the whole people of in South Sudan? You know, in Western countries, the Carrier of high salaries uh, uh, is doctor. Is doctor. Yeah. The first one is doctor. The the, the first uh, and and the lawyer the also has a high salary. So I mm, advise. I call on the government. Yes. Uh, to help the health system and uh, improve uh, increase the the finance budget for the hospitals and especially for human resources yes to help them to solve the different problem they face just uh, Dr. Gift uh, mentioned the salary, the transportation, and the, the, the work outside, yeah, and so on. So we China medical team will continue to cooperate with JTH and uh, other hospitals in South Sudan and to help it, uh, them to improve the conditions uh, of different uh, various fields. Mm. After the complement of phase two construction, 
uh, too bad in hospital. I think mm, too bad in hospital will become the biggest hospital, yeah, the largest hospital, not only in South Sudan, maybe one, uh, will be one of the largest hospital in Eastern Africa. Yes, just uh, uh, Dr. Gift said we also uh, will donate some advanced equipment such as uh, MI, uh, respiratory machine. Mm. So mm, I also believe that Juba Teaching Hospital uh, will become better and better in future. Not only Juba Teaching Hospital, but also the South Sudan will have a brighter future. I also uh, made the friendship between China and uh, South Sudan last forever, the friendship. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. George Chensi, team leader of China Medical Team to South Sudan, and Dr. Gift uh, Gibson Natana, uh, the deputy director at Juba Teaching Hospital. And thanks to you, uh, uh, Basoma Trevor Ayub, who is also a, medic a medical team uh, from China. And uh, yeah, dear listener, uh, thanks to our guest for sharing uh, valuable insights on the healthcare cooperation between South Sudan and China. Stay tuned for more discussions on, on building bridges. This is BR Valentino, I'm signing out. And uh, let's keep building bridges. Thank you so much. Bye-bye from here.